Hi, I'm Steve Jones from Redgate Software and SQL Server Central, and I want to show you how to get started with SQL Clone today. Now, SQL Clone is an amazing product that literally lets you clone databases in seconds, and you can save a ton of disk space. You can watch some videos on the main product page or see my session from SQL in the City 2017 last year, but I want to talk today about the install of the server. Now, our documentation site, there's an architecture page that lets you understand what's going on. Uh, I'm going to talk about these four items, getting the system installed and setting up your first agent as well as your share. There is more details on the requirements page, but I've got a checklist that I think will make things a little bit simpler. Here's my quick checklist that will help you get started. First, we need a Windows system that holds our web server. Typically, this also hosts a SQL server for the clone metadata database. This Windows system does need to be SQL or Windows Server 2008 R2 or later or Windows 7 Plus. And let me show you, I've got one of those installed. Here you can see I have a server named Atlas. This is 2012 R2 Windows Server, but it could be certainly Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 10, uh, Windows tw Server 2016, etc. So let's note that that is in fact done and I'll just mark that off. We also need a SQL Server for the clone metadata database. This does need to be SQL Server 2008 or greater, and I've got one of those set up as well. Here in Management Studio, you can see I'm connected to Atlas. This is a 2014 instance, and there's no databases on it, but we're gonna create one of those. So let me flip back to our checklist real quick. You can see here that we have our SQL Server, but we need a database for the SQL clone metadata. So let's create that first. If I come back over here, the installation will create this database, but you don't have to do that. You can actually do it yourself. The default is SQL clone config. Uh, I'm going to script this just with the defaults. Four, four meg and one meg for log files probably sufficient. This just holds metadata about the images and clones that are created from those images. There's not a lot of data here, so let's go ahead and create that. And we'll go back to our checklist. So we've completed that. We now need a service account for the SQL clone service. This is just the management piece that kind of manages metadata. Uh, recommendation is it's a domain account with access to the SQL server that's hosting this SQL server here. And it needs DB owner. It's going to really query information from that database, but because of upgrades, it may add tables or alter them. We want to typically give it DB owner. So let's do that. Now note optional, I've said it's create any database for this config database. We don't need this right because we've already created the database. Back in Management Studio, I'll go to my logins and you can see that I've got this clone server account that I've created. This is just a domain account. And let's go ahead and add something to this. Now it has no server roles, uh, actually has DB creator, but we don't need that. We do, however, want to grant it DB owner in the SQL clone config database. So we'll do that. And let me show you that domain setup. Here I am in my domain system. And if I look at the SQL clone server, you can see it's a domain account and it's a member of just domain users. There's nothing really special about this account. It's going to run a service that runs the SQL clone system. So we've completed this. The next step would be the agent, but let's go ahead and install the clone server first and then we'll come back to this area. So you can download SQL clone by itself as part of the data privacy suite or a SQL provision, which I've downloaded here. So I'm going to run this install program and it will set up both SQL clone and optionally data masker. Here the install started. I'm going to just do clone today. And I could do data masker. Let's run through this and accept the EULA. This is the default location and we'll just click install and let it run. This is a fairly small, simple service that needs to run. It just runs a basic web server and the clone management system. Once that's complete, this is going to start the installation of SQL clone itself. The first thing I need to do is log in with my Redgate account. So let's enter that in there. Put a password in there. And this just registers me with Redgate. Now I could activate this with a license key or purchase one, but I'm just going to continue with the trial here. We're now in the SQL clone setup itself. And you'll notice that SQL clone under bar config is that default database. We're going to stick this on the Atlas server. My domain is my home domain and we want the SQL clone server and a password. So let's do that. Hopefully I've typed that correctly. 
And what this will do is connect to this server, uh, verify that database exists or create it, and then start to do the install. The install completes fairly quickly, as you can see right there. And now the SQL clone web server is asking me to authenticate myself. So let's do that. I'll use my account and connect. And we won't save that here. You'll notice it loads the SQL clone system. At the very top, this blue bar is where in our products, we notify you of upgrades and information. In this case, I'm in a trial and it will let me, I won't be able to make new clones, though existing ones will work. So I could enter a license key, purchase one, or just ask me later, which is what I'll choose. And now for the base install for SQL clone, it wants me to get started. The SQL clone server really just runs metadata that manages the images and clones, and it doesn't do anything. In order to create a clone or to create an image, you need an agent on any machine that's going to perform those actions. So the first thing we want to do is download an agent. So let's do that. This is a fairly small file. You'll notice it downloads fairly quickly and it will appear in my downloads folder just like any other download. Now, before I run this, uh, I wanna show you how I did the agent setup. If I flip back to the install, we'll notice that each agent has some requirements that it needs in order to do this. Uh, it does need local admin privileges on the machine, access to a network, and then uh, it needs rights on SQL Server. Now, essentially, it needs to be able to create a database, view a definition, or alter a database. It also needs process admin because it may need to disconnect users. These are really close to sysadmin permissions, so I'm just going to go ahead and grant sysadmin permissions. Let me also go back to my checklist. Since this is really a development account, uh, as I said, it's going to have local admin anyway. Local admins can always be sysadmin on the SQL server. I'll just grant that, and then we'll go from there. So let's flip over to Management Studio. Here we are back in Management Studio. You'll notice I have another service account here, SQL Clone Agent. Uh, I'm going to grant those sysadmin privileges to this account, which I have done. Uh, it doesn't need to be mapped anywhere, so we'll leave that alone. And if I flip back to my Windows server, we'll see the domain set up. Here we are back in the domain side. You can see I've got my SQL Clone Agent. I like to separate accounts out so I know what who is doing what. And this is, in fact, an administrator. It does say for the domain because this is a domain controller, but it can just be a local admin on whichever machine is going to create the clones. So the developer workstation or the uh, actual database server system would need a local administrator on that account. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and run the agent installer. This is very similar to the clone installation in which I need to uh, give it a service account that I'll use. So I'll pick that and put that in here. Enter a password, and I'll say set up agent. Now, as it said, this does need local administrator privileges, and there's a link that explains why. But this is creating a service account that will then be able to launch the virtual disk service and create and delete clones and images. So that's done, and I could now actually create images if I wanted to. Let's refresh this page, and we should have an agent installed. And we'll see that now it's a valid link. I can create an image. So I don't need to create an image, but I do need to go have everything set up so that I can create an image. And to do that, there were two things I did. First, I created a location where I can store images. So I have the SQL clone images share here. And if I look at the sharing, uh, you'll notice that it has this group, SQL clone developers with read, write. That, allow, that gives me a place where I can store my images. SQL Clone Developers is just a security group that I created that allows me to assign permissions. And that way, at, from the Active Directory level, I can add users to this group and they'll have permissions access to share. Inside of SQL Clone, I could also, inside of the setup, use permissions to grant permissions to developers with that group or more granular groups as well. At this point, SQL Server would be set up and SQL Clone is ready to create images. So I have the ability to do that if I want to. I'll do that in another video, but for now, that's the setup we need for SQL Clone Server. I'm Steve Jones for Redgate Software and SQL Server Central.